Great. Individually and collectively, I do. So that's the answer. So uh, the, the Lord's Prayer is directed towards the Father. I also pray because Christ said, what, what, it, what you ask in my name, I will do. Uh, and also I pray to the Holy Spirit for discernment and the words to say when I come into the park. And also I pray to God, as it were, the triune, like, all together. So like, would you say that you pray to that more than one specific person of the triune God? Yes. And that's how Jesus told us to pray. He said, pray to the Father in my name. Like he, and also the Spirit prays on our behalf. To, he searches the, the hearts and minds and relays without words and have, like groaning to the Father on our behalf. So it's, it's not unbiblical to do that. Yeah, so like, would you not say that? So, so how, would you, how, would you like, how would you pray? How would you pray? Like, say, say, Jesus says, this is how you shall pray. And then he gives the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, holy or hallowed is thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'm not sure that last bit is actually in there, but that is not the only prayer. No, the Psalms are full of prayer. Any communication with God is prayerful in its nature. He said, this is how you will pray. He also said, though, pray ceaselessly. So you don't, you, and it also says, avoid vain repetition. So you wouldn't just run through the same prayer ceaselessly. You pray for, it tells you to pray for wisdom. It tells you whatever you ask for, um, you'll be given. Knock and the door will be opened. If you ask for wisdom, God will grant it. The fruits of the spirit, you can pray for those. So there's a, Personal, because Jesus is a mediator. Jesus, the man, and his death is a mediation between the, fa the Father and mankind. We can pray for whatever we like, as long as it's the will of God, it will be given. So when you do your specific prayer, so I'm just Kay. Kay. So like you as Kay, when you do like your own specific prayer, you yourself. I don't like, often pray for myself, but yeah, I'm following you. I'm not being awkward. I just. I prefer to pray for other people, I mean, like, thinking that they're praying the Bible, for me. Yeah. A lot of the time, I say, "Please, God, don't let me uh, like just jump up and smack him in the face." You know, like just those little. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you like? Do you say like through, through Jesus or Son? I say in in Jesus's in Jesus. I pray these things in Jesus's name, or I pray these name these things in the name of He who is risen. I don't know. In Jesus's name, because selfishly for me because Jesus said if you ask in my name I will do it so it's like a I'm not saying that God won't do it but it's just an added so would you say reassurance that, would you say that Jesus isn't God then? no I'd say that Jesus is the second person of the triune God he is God in his own right but he is not the triune God the triune God is Yahweh and Jesus is the eternal son not of Yahweh it's not like Yahweh and then another one Jesus, Jesus is what uh, the, the man who became flesh when the eternal son uh, was begotten. Or oh, no, before he was begotten, because he was begotten at the baptism. Sorry. So what's your name? Nathan. Nathan. Are you, uh, what, what, do you have a faith? Um, yeah, I believe in the Bible. I just like... Is there a name for your faith with, so we don't have to go in the houses? Is it Israelite? Is it kind of, uh, I don't know, oneness -y? Is it... No, Non-Trinitarian, biblical. I just believe in, in, in the Bible. Really. Do you? Do you? Like? Do you? Do you sorry. Do you hold? Feel that you're you're more you hold more to the New Testament in as much as Paul says the old covenant for us is obsolete. Do you include yourself in the us? Do you accept Jesus as yeah. God? Oh, boom! You're in, kind of thing. But it's not up to me. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. Like, I just don't. I don't. Um, I don't agree with like the Trinity. Yeah, no, that you want to, don't talk to us actually. If you look for the verse that talks about the Godhead, that is the Trinity, if that makes sense. Trinity is not in the Bible as a word, but the concept is already there as the word Godhead. When it says the fullness of the Godhead, it pleased God for the fullness of the Godhead to dwell in him, Christ bodily, that is the deity, the, the, the part, you know, 1 John 5, 7, there's many, many places where Father and Son and Spirit are, like the resurrection. Jesus says, I lay down my life and I have authority to pick it up. Also, it says the Holy, the power that raised him from the dead, i.e. the Holy Spirit, resides in you. And also, 
it says that God raised him from the dead. So that's the triunity of God working together and being referenced individually. Do you see what I'm saying? And it also baptised in the name of the Father, Son and Holy... You, that you can't say in the name of K, Usman, because that would be the names of... It's, it's inferring a unity of purpose and nature and essence, but a triunity of personhood. I wouldn't, I wouldn't agree with um, Trinity because obviously Trinity isn't in the Bible. Yeah, Godhead. Do you accept the word Godhead means Father, Son and Spirit? Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't accept that. Do you believe that John 1-1 one, one is us. true? Yeah, yeah, I believe. So you believe the word was God and with God. So you know there's a duality. Not Jewish. Dual, d duality. Like a, sec a two-ness. Yeah. In the oneness. And then you see that the, the Spirit... Um, intercedes on our behalf in the Bible to God, uh, to the Father more specifically. And, and you can't proceed from that which you do not originate in. In the Proverbs it speaks of wisdom as be beginning with God also and then goes on to describe this wisdom basically as the Holy Spirit because there is no, there's no other candidate. It's, do you know, oh, oh actually that's a fib. Some people ascribe it to Jesus, but I... Uh, so, so, so then how many, like, how many thrones like, do you see in it? I don't believe in the Sky Palace interpretation, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because at the right hand of, for Judaic culture, was just a position of honour. Yeah, yeah. So it was the prodigal son, it was the second most important dude in the house kind of thing. But by God saying that, he's inferring on someone who is, even though 100% God, he's 100% man, and therefore it's still an honour to say at the right hand of God. And it's not Jesus... It's other people giving him, other Jews giving him that honour, saying he is like at the table. Because I don't, on Judgment Day, I mean, I'm a, I could be wrong. I'll be on my knees at the time anyway. Like so, but yeah, I don't think there's an actual chair because what's the Holy Spirit doing? Just floating. Like I, I you know what I mean? Like I'm not happy with the Wahhabi kind of literal. When it says God has eyes or when it says that God's hand rests because upon them, it's because of our limited uh, comprehension and so he's far beyond. Mind. Yes, yeah, because yeah. we know what it means to have eyes. Yeah. We know it infers sight or blindedness. Like so, yeah, so I, I don't really feel that it's, it's irrelevant to me. The fact that Jesus had arms on the cross is, uh, that's where I stop because Yahweh is like, is spirit anyway, prior to, prior to the incarnation. The angel of Yahweh, yeah. But still, it doesn't mean he can't manifest, it just means that in his pre-creation state or his original form is formlessness. Because he's every, like, you know, I'm not a pantheist, so he can't be the tree, but there's nowhere small enough that he isn't, and there's nowhere big enough that he isn't also completely filling that space. So, yeah. So, so would you say that, um, like... Babes, just step back once, that's all, just in case you don't want to get your fade right on the camera, like... <laughs> Go on. Would you, would you say that, like, um... I'll do a wrap-up. Like, in, like, would, would you say... Can you hear him? Sorry, when he's speaking, can you hear anything of his voice? I hope so. Yeah. Go on. Yeah, so, um, would you say that, uh, Believing in three is believing in one. Yes, of course. Yeah. I, be, I, I can in the Bible, hi, Israel is referenced as one. Like you know, there's Echad and there's Yakid. There's still a man and a woman will become one. It's still the it's the one. It's it's not two. It is two, but it's also one. And Israel is one. Hero is, and hero is oh, the Lord your God is one. Why do you need to say it, really, technically, if there's no possibility of other than? And the Old Testament, I'll give you my channel name. I did a, it's too long to go into all the verses, but there's explicit triunity within the Old Testament. The many, many, the angel of Yahweh, notwithstanding, but also included. There's right from Genesis all the way through. There's duality, plurality, and then obviously I'm saying triunity because because it's true, but also because I think it. I think it because it's true, and it, it's not true because I think it. If you know what I mean. But yeah. So, like with me, I would say, um, like in the Bible, it says that God is a spirit. Yeah? Yes. Now, um, for does me, it mean he can't become other than? 
because he took on flesh, the second person did anyway, like of a, a, a God, the eternal son. To me, it, it was Because you me. believe in John 1, didn't you? You already told me this, yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's explicit. I believe then. in the whole Bible. Boom! Yeah, Shakalaka, I, as I it believe, were. I believe in the whole Bible. I've got to have a seat about the yeah. yeah. I've got yeah, yeah. to I'm listening to you. Um, I would say... I would say that uh, God couldn't become fully like. Couldn't. That, that You're place. saying God isn't almighty, no. all powerful. No, 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 no. He doesn't. Do, he doesn't just. I, he created the I, heavens he and the earth. He created flesh, and I would I would say that he got in flesh, but I wouldn't say that he's flesh itself. That's one of the, the. That's. I feel like maybe you need to think about that one a little more, or I need to understand you better, because that's one of the old heresies that. He's actually just God pretending to be a person, like he's not, because the fully man part of the hypostatic union is the part that means he is able to deliver us from our sins and to be not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters. If he's not fully man as well as fully God, the covenant can't be the old covenant can't be satiated. The, the blood, you know, no forgiveness. So I'll tell you why I don't think that God is fully man. I don't believe that Yahweh is fully man. I believe that the second person, the eternal son, the word of God became flesh, because that's what the Bible literally says. Uh, I would, the way that I see it as a Christian, I would say that um, the son is referring to the, the flesh, the nature of So how, how was the son in the beginning with God? How does he say, share with me the glory? shared in the beginning. How is he a lamb slain from the foundations of the earth? Or before the foundations, I can't remember. A, a lamb, a, a, a lamb slain. Yeah, Jesus is the lamb slain from the foundations of the earth. Before Eve ate the apple, Jesus was already um, as a, you know, God's outside of time. So basically it was I, all I would, I would the, say in the knowledge of God, because God is all knowing. And if it's the knowledge of say, God, therefore it must say, be more real than our reality. Like the knowledge of God is true. Yeah, yeah. God speaks truth into reality. Yeah. yeah? And I would say truth. No, what I'm saying yeah. is, without flesh at that point, when it was a reference, not when God thought it because it's eternal and He's all knowing, when we as humans reference that point in time, it had yet to be fulfilled. Yeah. It but, was but a it still happened. Exactly. It, it had happened. happened for God at that point. Yeah. Even at the beginning, it had already happened. Right? Because He's also in yesterday, tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> But for us, <coughs> technically, he was slain for our iniquities before we ever fell from grace, which shows the providence and the ineffability of God's plan. But at that point, he had no flesh. You see? Like, at the point we spoke about it happening. When he shared the glory in the beginning, he was yet to become, for us, the man, Jesus Christ. As John says, he... He came into the world and the world didn't accept him. The darkness did not understand and, and him so because he was the light of men. And God is the light of men. And, and, and so how would you interpret... Because I, I see the Bible as, as only one interpretation, right? Sure. As, as, no, uh, God says, come, let us reason together. Yeah. He doesn't say, this is how it is, bro. Like, no, 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 of course not, because... I mean, there is, this is how it is, but we, he meets us where we are. So if you yeah, need yeah, to believe course, something course, a little yeah. bit erroneous to get to the crux, yeah. God will then mould you into the person who's, who can hear it. I would say that you know there's one tr there's one truth. Sure, there's one, Jesus there's Christ one is that truth. Right? Yeah. And, and I would say that there's no private interpretation in terms of the text within the Bible. What? But, yeah. but you know, human beings um, will create the errors because they're fallible. Because, because, because but Jesus fallible. says yeah. He is the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And He yeah. can't claim to be the truth in isolation from Yahweh because Yahweh is the truth. Also, Yahweh searches the hearts and minds of men. Therefore, yeah. He has access to the truth of our condition. But Jesus, Yeshua, says also. He searches the hearts and minds of men. And he also says, I and my Father are one. If you have seen me, you have seen the one true God that he speaks about in John 17, 3. Yeah. And, and, and what, what would you, how would you say um, you have seen the Father? How, how, how would you see the Father? By seeing Jesus. How have I seen Because Jesus and the Father are one in so, purpose, not in personality. So because, because okay. sorry, because yeah. at 
before the crucifixion, I don't but oneness people have to somehow believe that the baptism and the crucifixion was a pantomime, that Jesus was throwing his voice from the clouds. He was down getting baptised. He was also saying, this day you, I have forgotten thee, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And he also had to have a puppet show going on with a little dove. Like, that's oneness. Also, before the crucifixion, he's crying to the Father, saying, take this cup from me, but your will. You can't have a your will if it's secretly my will. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I can happily assert that he has two wills, a human and a divine, and that's why I know that the flesh is not just an illusion. It's not just like maybe in the Old Testament where you see a vision, like three people at the tent, you know, for like Abraham and that. It's not like you just see it. He literally says, see these holes in my hand. I'm not a ghost. That precludes him from being non-fleshful beforehand, if you see what I'm saying. I mean, I, I hear what you're saying, but yeah. I would say, you know, Jesus isn't the only one. Uh, Jesus Christ isn't the only one that will um, have a spiritual body. So when you're... When you're We've all got a spiritual body. Yeah, yeah, um, we, yeah exactly. So we all have a spiritual body. Right? But after his he was resurrected bodily, is what I'm saying. So you must have a body to yeah. be resurrected bodily. He says, yeah. see these holes. Yeah. I, he literally says, I am not a ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Therefore, we like God, ghosts are also a thing. But he says, I am not a ghost. That means he had flesh. He wept in the garden you don't weep if you haven't got you know what i'm saying like he um he slept when the storm was going on and in that verse in the aramaic once it's translated he says who they say who is this who can calm the storm like oh what's happening that's the cockney translation of the aramaic and then he says fear not i am the living god but he's not saying i am yahweh in all his manifest glory as in like in this one body not omnipresent like not uh you know he's saying i am the living god and he is and i am is obviously yahweh like the name so would you say that you see god? uh i've so me personally I've, I've seen evidence of god thoroughly in my life like to the point where if i had to tell my testimony like it yeah i have I also had a vision, um, which I ascribe to Jesus. I can't say that I've seen the Father, as it were, only via the caveat of having seen Jesus. I have seen the Father, if you see what I'm saying. I can't visualise in my mind. When I was a little girl, actually, I could. I had an idea or an image in my mind that I don't feel like I illustrated myself of God, but he always seemed quite sad, <laughs> like, or a bit, what's the word, like, contemplative. Like, oh, what are they up to? But that was as a little girl. Now I have seen, I feel like I've seen Jesus, but not in his entirety. Within the vision I saw, I heard a verse and I saw a part. I saw a, a, an un, a revealing, I guess. Like a, yeah. um, I would say that seeing God is seeing the truth in the Bible. But also it is seeing creation. The Bible says that you will be with no excuse as to the reality of God if you have seen creation. I don't know how that works for blind people. I'm not getting into that. But it says the, the, the glory of creation displays the divinity of God and therefore none will be with excuse. So technically, we've all seen it intellect or like spiritually, but yeah, I, I, yeah. So you're saying the truth of the Bible. I would say the truth of the Bible is Jesus from Genesis all the way to Revelation. I would say Jesus, Jesus is his spirit before it was flesh. Sure, of course. I, I would say Jesus. There was no earth to step onto for eternity. I, I, I would say Jesus is the father that got into the sun. That's how I would see it. That's why when the European Who's the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is God. Because you're oneness. You're a, you're a Unitarian. Modalist? I, I don't. I don't. I know. I know. I but if you speak to a Unitarian, no you find that. There's no category for me. I just but you're not a Trinitarian. No. Ah, so then there is a category. The category is non-Trinitarian. You could be binitarian, you could be unitarian, I don't really quadratarian, I don't know. I don't, I don't need, you know, search. I know, labels, man. And all of this. I don't, I just oh, oh, you just brought in the JW. Do you think Jesus is the Archangel Michael? No. So therefore we can give you another category, not a Jehovah's Witness. Yeah, no, I'm not. Exactly, not so you're not one of them There's Aryan no. heretics, you're not a Trinitarian. I, but, it's your, but, but but with all due respect, yeah. you're relying on your discernment. And, no, 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 maybe no. the discernment of the Holy Spirit. I don't mean I, I that. Wouldn't, I wouldn't say, your interpretation. You know, you said there's one truth and our like a 
seeing of it. Like how our exegesis is in as much as we see that truth. I would say we that understand that truth. I would, I would yes, say that so would I. So would I. Illuminating and discerning as the Bible says that the Holy Spirit does. 100%. Excellent. So you believe in a duality. Because that's not the Father illuminating and discerning. That's the Holy Spirit. So, so, so what's, what's a duality then? What's Meaning there's a two-ness. Not a three-ness. A two-ness. You believe that there is God the Father who is God the Son in the Son or however you put it. But you also believe that the Holy Spirit has a function of illuminating and discerning the Scripture for you. Yeah. And the Scripture says, God, God groan in, no, no, yeah. yes, but we are told that the, the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of Christ reside in us. Two separate. The Holy Spirit and the Spirit of Christ. Yes, Romans 8, 9 talks about the Spirit of Christ. If it is not in you, yada, yada. And the Holy Spirit says the power that raised Christ from the dead I resides I in you. I wouldn't say that those two, uh, those two labelings they're not. Right. Yeah, but it's the Bible doing the labelling. The Holy Spirit authored the scripture. No, but I would say that the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ Spirit is one in, is the same. But it doesn't say that in the Bible. And to, with all due respect, yeah. I take Paul's word, inspired by the Holy Spirit, not the Spirit of Christ, over yours. Do you know what I mean? Like because that's what I'm to do. I have to um, lean not even on my own understanding. I have to look at the scripture and say that logically because God gave us reason he says come let us reason together that, that if one thing is mentioned and it can be absent without the other thing being mentioned they can't be the same thing they can be of the same origin they can come from the same place God certainly but they can't be the same thing because Christ says when two or three are gathered together I am there but, he, uh, but the Holy Spirit indwells individually each believer and we see that at that Pentecost, you know, like you see it manifest. I would say if the Holy Spirit dwells individually in each and every person. No, no, in every believer, yeah, true yeah, believer. In, yeah, in every believer, sorry. Yeah, definitely not in any I mean, not, like not person, followers of Satan. Yeah, yeah, not every, not every person. But um, if, if that spirit can dwell in each and every person, then that's omnipresent. Sure. And he is God. That is the Lord giver of life, the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and I would say that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit You're going to say, is Jesus. Is Jesus. Uh, is Jesus. Where's Ash? He's, he's saying exactly what Ash says. That's heresy. Is, is I'm just Jesus letting Christ. you know. From a from a Christianity point of, like a Trinity. Where's Ash, man? There's a guy here with tassels on <laughs> and, a, and a cardigan. He says what you say. Where it is, is Unitarianism. No, Ash, you are my... Sorry, I just shouted right into the mic. I'm so sorry. But I'm going to wrap this up. It's lovely speaking to you, Nathan. But I'm um, uh, like I'm a little bit tired and a little bit usmaned. And, but you did rescue <laughs> me from that lunatic. So, like, God bless you. Are you here every week? Is it your first time no, coming no, up? I'm not here. Come back. Oh, well, we're going to go for some. I'm going to say coffee. Everyone knows it's gin and tonic for me. But. <laughs> We will, like some other Christians, and I will be shortly exiting stage left, and you're welcome to come with us. I'll scream at gin and tonic, and you scream at polo or whatever. <laughs> but anyway, Steve, have you seen Ash? Oh, there he is, that man in the brown with the tassels. That's literally his line, Jesus is the Holy Spirit. He says there's only one name. The man with the big hair? With the, no, the light-skinned Jamaican guy with a gold tooth. Right. I'll introduce you in a minute. Let me wrap this video up yeah. and then, uh, okay. I miss you all a lot. Okay, hi. I'd just wrap me up in a carpet basically and just shove me behind a tree. Um, Usman, like, God bless him because I can't at the moment. He really does need to like reinterpret what genuine means what giving your word entails, how to deliver, how to have compassion, how to not seek the approval of uh, humans, uh, and like how to not, he just deliberately tries to mislead. I don't have the charity in me at the moment, I do. I'm sure he believes he's doing the right thing. However, Allah says, I guide who I guide, and I misguide who I misguide, and who are you, in brackets Usman at this stage, to guide who I misguide. So clearly Allah has, Allah has misguided me. If 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 he doesn't have a son and all that shizzle. So he just needs to turn it in now. Like he's getting on in years and 
I reckon a nice cup of tea and a pair of slippers. I'd go and visit him in the home. Anyway, um, thank you, John. I love you people. Um, I feel better than I did when I started, but that's just Jesus. It's not these people. But it's you people and you people. So thank you, because because it keeps me off the streets and it keeps me out of my own head, which is oftentimes a dangerous place to be, e.g. three in the morning. All right, lots of love. See you later. Ciao, ciao. Bye.